All right, welcome to Dynamic Movements, Physical Therapy, and Wellness Pelvic Floor and Core. I'm Dr. Laura Iden, and I'm going to give a little bit of a warning at the beginning of this. This program is not intended to diagnose or treat any Ill illness or injury. It is for educational purposes only. If you choose to try any of these exercises presented here, you do so at your own risk. Please consult your physician before you start any new exercise program. Not every exercise is safe for every person. Correct execution of all exercise is imperative to prevent injury. Please consult your healthcare professional if you have any questions about exercise execution or if an exercise is right for you. You are responsible for yourself and will not hold Laura Iden or dynamic movement, physical therapy and wellness responsible. So this is a little bit about me. This is Dynamic Movement, Physical Therapy and Wellness. I'm Laura Iden. And if you wanna take a screenshot of, this is the contact information, my cell phone number, laura at dynamicmovementpt.com. And the website is the same, dynamicmovementpt.com. Hello everyone, thank you for joining. All right. Who am I and why did I want to provide this educational video? My name is Dr. Laura Iden, and I have my doctorate in physical therapy and my master's degree in athletic training. I've been working in outpatient orthopedics uh, with a focus on sports medicine for about 12 years. Um, recently, my continuing education has led me down the path to become a postpartum corrective exercise specialist through Sarah Duval, who is an amazing, educator, fitness expert, and also physical therapist. I realized that through my own health and wellness journey, through physical therapy after having my own children, um, that information needs to be more available to pregnant and postpartum women, no matter the age of your children. Once you've had a child, they're po you're postpartum after that. I'm excited to contribute this resource to the mom tribe that I'm a part of. To start, I will be providing some basic education about the pelvic floor and how it's connected to the rest of your body. Today, I'll be covering breathing, posture, and alignment. Let me first ask, how many people know where or what the pelvic floor even is? Okay, I'm gonna explain a little bit of it, but not go into a heck of a lot of detail. The pelvic floor is a group of muscles that live at the base of your pelvis between your sit bones and between your tailbone and between the pelvic bone in the front. It's a group of muscles that support our pelvic organs, function in bladder, bowel, and sexual well being. Your body actually functions within a pressure system, where at the top are your vocal cords and at the bottom is your pelvic floor. Why is this important? Good posture is equal to perfect pressure regulation. So either too much or too little pressure can cause problems such as hernia or low back pain. The overall impact that posture has will be addressed throughout this entire presentation and at the exercises in the second portion. I'm gonna go into some basic factors that influence this pressure system. The first we're gonna talk about is your head. Now I'm gonna stand up to demonstrate this a little bit. We want good head alignment. So when we say good head alignment, we wanna think tall. So we wanna take here, like your head is reaching, the crown of your head is reaching towards the sky. So from a side view, my head is here, it's reaching towards the sky. If you have a forward head posture like this, your diaphragm here, which we're gonna go into much more detail, will actually not be able to function efficiently. And your pelvis and your pelvic floor, because of this forward head posture, may not also work well. So that's the first step, head alignment. The second, as we're going from top down, is rib cage angle. Your rib cage angle, also influences your core muscles and your diaphragm, which are all very important. You want the rib cage angle basic to, basically to be about at 90 degrees. So you can improve greatly upon this with breath work 
and also manual therapy that you can get done by a trained professional or if you're shown it you can actually do techniques on your own as well i'm going to demonstrate many people don't know what the heck i'm talking about when we say rib cage angle so i'm going to demonstrate to you i've already drawn the lines on myself so you can see here i have a black line here and here so the best test that you can do for yourself is to actually take so your bottom part of your ribs here and you take a pen and actually draw it on each side so i'm here my rib cage angle here this on my right side this side over here is actually a little bit higher than it should be so i would want it a little bit further down so i want this line to be a little bit further down it's up a little bit but this actually isn't too bad but i've been working on it for almost a year so i did have a rib flare but through um changing of breath and posture i've been able to influence that so the next thing we're going to discuss is the diaphragm now why is it so important it's basically the major muscle of respiration it's the primary worker for breathing it's basically what it was designed to do for you to be efficient in this canister system that we're talking about you want to have an efficient diaphragm you want a 360 degrees use of basically your ribs and your muscles you want front side and back body expansion and then contraction the next thing down as we're moving from head to toes is your hips how your hips move this is also very important the mobility stability strength and range of motion of your hips actually influences the rest of your pressure system any weakness or tightness or actually positioning of the femur will actually influence the efficiency or load that you put on other areas if you have one part of your body that's not as efficient it's going to put more stress on another part of your body an example that i give of this is your femur i have many friends and clients that complain of tightness in your hip flexors here now there could be many reasons for this hip flexor tightness what i've been seeing lately is a lot of it is caused because the femur so you have a ball and socket joint here so your femur is in the hip joint so if the femur is too far forward like this what's up here these are your hip flexors essentially these hip flexors are always going to feel like they're they're being stretched or tight that's because the femur is laying too far forward and when that femur is too far forward what's in the back side here your glutes the powerhouse that propels you forward when you're trying to walk when you're trying to move and if your femur is forward here how are these muscles in the back going to work they're not going to so this is often a problem that we find so um that will be further discussed that's a whole rabbit hole that we can go down um and we'll probably put out another zoom about um happy hips something like that that there's a all different components added into that also another area that your hips influence is the pelvic floor so if you have any of these compensations going on in the hips and they're not working efficiently then your pelvic floor muscles on the bottom that actually need to be able to relax and contract when you're doing dailies um, when you're doing activities of daily living anything out and about or if you're lifting heavy objects moving between positions then they're going to put more strain on these pelvic floor muscles we're going to go into that in a little bit more as i go on lastly the major hip flexor muscle your psoas here attaches up into your diaphragm so if you think the hip flexors aren't affecting the diaphragm and the whole breathing system and the diaphragm is not affecting the hips and how you move that's wrong it all works together the next thing as we go down is pelvis positioning so i put some videos out on instagram of this before but we're gonna if you want you can stand up and we're gonna test to see your 
positioning of your pelvis. So I'll do it from the front here and then I'll do it from the side. So to test this, you can either be in an anterior tilt or a posterior pelvic tilt. There's other positions that you could be in. We're gonna go over these two right now. So you take your hip bones here. You go to the front of them at the top here. You put your thumb, the base of your thumb and the top of those hips. Then you lay the hands down. Your fingers should touch what is known as, if you don't know, your pubic bones. <laughs> They're right here. So they should be, as I turn sideways, you'll have a better view. This, this is called the ASIS. Their ASIS should be in line with your pubic bone. If your pubic bone is back more than the, than the top of your thumbs, your ASIS, then you're in an anterior pelvic tilt. You see how my pelvis is tilted forward? This is more of a neutral position. And then it's a very difficult for me to get <laughs> into a posterior pelvic tilt more in this position. But if these, the pubic bones are in front of these uh, thumbs here, then that's a, you're in a posterior pelvic tilt. Now, many people transition between an anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. We want to try to be in that neutral position for most of the activities that we're doing. So if you're kind of stuck between one or transitioning between one and another, you want to try to get more into that neutral position. Now let's review a little bit about the pelvic floor functioning and how it relates to everything else and why it's important. We're going to go back to breathing mechanics, which are a key component in ensuring that the pressure system, the canister system that we're talking about is working properly. When you inhale, back up a little bit. When you inhale, you have expansion of your ribs. I'm gonna actually stand up for this. When you inhale, you want expansion of your ribs. So I'm gonna actually put the tongue on my, the roof of my mouth, which we're gonna go into the future parts of this lecture. If you put the tongue on the roof of your mouth, you're gonna have a better connection to your diaphragm. That's a nice little key there. Tongue on the roof of your mouth, and you want front, side, and back body expansion, at which time your pelvic floor actually relaxes and lengthens. If you can't really get in touch with this, that's something that can be worked on. You can get in touch with the, your healthcare professional, or we can discuss this later on. So we're going to inhale, expansion front, side, and back body, and then exhale. As you exhale, your ribs melt down towards your pelvis. And at the same time, your pelvic floor actually lifts up. Now, you might need a little bit of education to try to get in touch with this because a lot of people can't really feel what's going on at their pelvic floor. They need to be kind of taught what's going on. Now, it's difficult if there's tightness or there's weakness at your pelvic floor to get this good pressure management between your diaphragm and the pelvic floor. If your pelvic, if your pressure system isn't efficient, the forces that we create doing stuff day to day with breathing, lifting, lifting heavy objects, running, jumping, or even coughing, well, the, that pressure system, it'll take the path of least resistance, which, could be detrimental to, to us. So I'm only gonna talk about the next two topics briefly because that's another rabbit hole that we can go down. But I'm gonna talk briefly about how this pressure system and its relationship to both diastasis recti and prolapse. Two things that often occur to more so women than men and after having children, there's more of a likelihood. But as I'll discuss later, the diastasis actually happens a good amount of the time to men as well. Prolapse often occurs when the pelvic floor has an imbalance in this pressure system. As you imagine, if there's too much downward pressure on your pelvic floor, what's going to happen? Then you're going you're, you're to have something go on at the bottom that you could feel often at times prolapse in patients and clients say, well, it just feels like kind of open because it is. You have fascia in there that could have been stretched out and other things. 
And often at times, the good thing is if we change this pressure system, then we're gonna take some of that load that we're putting on that pelvic floor away. So that's great. You must be aware of this pressure system when you're lifting heavy objects. So when you're lifting something heavy, you don't wanna bear down because what happens then? All that pressure goes down. And that's not, a, that's not good mechanics. You want a good inhale before you're gonna lift something heavy, expansion of the front side and back body. And then on the exhale, let's explain why this happens. Because what happens on the exhale? The exhale, the ribs comes down and the pelvic floor comes up when you're exhaling. So as you're lifting something heavy, you want the pelvic floor to come up with you. Now, if you're bearing down, ugh, all this pressure going down on your pelvic floor, and then you have more pressure because you're lifting something heavy, your pelvic floor is like, what the heck? I can't take all this pressure. So at least having some knowledge of breathing mechanics could definitely help you out. Prolapse is often caused by, at times, weakness or tightness that is found on your pelvic floor. Now the next topic, diathesis recti is something that um, people may or may not know about. It's basically a separation of the linea alba in the center here. So you have the linea alba down the center and mine has a little bit still that's working on, kind of you see this area right in there. It's connective tissue at your midline. But like I discussed before, it can often be seen in men as well because they deal with these same issues. It's seen in middle-aged or older men with improper breathing mechanics and increased weight that they have to lift. So there are three points and I'm just gonna briefly talk about this. I'm not, this point is not to educate so much about what diastasis is and how to check for it. We can go about that and you can get in touch with me if you want more information on that but there's three points that you wanna check for diathesis. You wanna check at, above, and below the belly button. When you're testing it, there's a position that you test for laying on your back. I'm sure you can find on the internet, there's tons of information about there, some good, some bad, about how to test for this. It's better to go to a healthcare professional and try to actually see what's going on. But so you wanna test the depth that you could potentially have your finger, have one of your fingers go in, the width, how many fingers wide, and also when you're checking the depth, you wanna see if it's squishy or not. Again, like I said, we're not gonna go into detail about what's positioning that you test that in, how you test that. If you have any questions, we can go over that. It's often seen when you're doing exercises in many different positions, when you see a doming occur here. So if you have here and there's a doming, when you come up and there's any sort of doming of this tissue in that area, which is often difficult for this area to heal if we're putting outward pressure on it. So that's why posture and alignment is key. I'm gonna give you one little example that I actually became aware of after following somebody about probably eight months ago. So. I was following somebody on the internet and they put out a little post and I was like, huh, that's actually some good information that I can pass along. So if you're here and say you're going to take, you're taking a shower and you have to lift your arms up and overhead. So if I lift my arms up and overhead to reach my hair, often at times, most people will get this range. I'm on Zoom here. The back. So we're here. My friend. Sorry about that. So, so we're here, and if I want to reach to the top of my head, how am I going to do it? Often at times, you see that extension that I have of my back? What happens here to my front? We're putting outward pressure on the diastasis, so that's influencing it. So as much as you can, keep your ribs stacked over your pelvis and reach your arms up overhead without these ribs going into a flaring position coming up like this. We'll talk more about um, 
ribs and rib flare as we go on. So basically we want to ensure that the, di that the diaphragm and the core and the pelvic floor are all working together as an efficient system. So we can all stand up if you'd like, and we're gonna check our own, do a quick alignment check. So we want to make sure the head is reaching tall, crown of the head reaching tall to the sky. Then next thing we're gonna look at is the sternum. So the sternum here, right between the bone between your chest here, the sternum here over your pubic bones. So here, over the pubic bone area. You don't wanna be leaning back or forward. So sternum over the pubic bones is another good positioning hint to be aware of. We already went over the anterior and posterior pelvic tilt of the pelvis. So again, thumbs on the top, the hip bone, fingers on the pubic bone, if we're forward or back, you wanna to try to maintain that neutral position. The last thing we're gonna talk about is your feet. You want your feet grounded to the floor. You want both, you want pressure through your heel, your big toe and your pinky, that tripod that's often talked about in yoga classes. And the same thing with the crown of the head, reaching tall to the sky, often talked about in yoga classes as well. All very good reminders on posture and try to being aware of this. If this system that we're talking about is optimal, you will challenge your core through things that you do every day, all the time, with your family, with your friends. Like myself, when I'm here in this playroom or this school room, this uh, playroom that's turned into the homeschool room <laughs> um, with our two toddlers, say going down onto the floor, getting back up off of the floor. If you're changing somebody, if you're bending over trying to change your child that doesn't want to be changed, that doesn't want their diaper to be changed. You can, if you have awareness of your core, you can be working it as to, you're not bearing down and trying to really forcefully hold positions, but as you are better able to connect to your core and your diaphragm and your breathing mechanics, you will essentially be more aware of it when you're doing things that you're in your everyday life. Positions that could challenge the core in a little bit uh, more difficult way are kneeling, half kneeling when one foot forward and back, squatting and transitioning positions throughout the day. If your pressure system is not working efficiently and you're not allowing your muscles to work throughout the day, as you're living, you could be putting your body at risk for injury further down the line. That's why I wanted to get this information out there to people because like, oh no, it's okay. I do, you know, I do a workout routine. I mean, I follow one. I follow one or two on YouTube. It's very easy to get a workout routine in and I'm doing some core work, but now I'm more connected to how it should be feeling. I'm not just doing an exercise to get it done. If you're not feeling it where you should be feeling it, then you could be putting yourself at risk for, for getting injured down the line. And you might as well do it the right way. And now we've given you some tools to try to connect to that. So the next part of this um, Zoom call, um, we're gonna go through some exercises. So right now we're going to, I'm gonna pause the recording um, we're going to take a break and um, take some questions for anybody that's on here. And then when you get back, I would like you to potentially have, I'll show you, a playground ball if you have one, and either a large and a small towel. Because we're going to use these things for some of the positions that we're in. And also if you have access to a chair that can, um, access to a chair pretty much that you're gonna have to put your feet up on potentially for one of the exercises. That would be great. So we'll be back in a couple minutes. We're gonna take a nice pause here and then resume. Hello and welcome to the exercise portion of the pelvic floor and core. So 
let's talk a little bit about the exercises. You basically want to make sure that you have a good connection between your ribs and your pelvic floor when you're performing these exercises. You don't want increased tension or gripping coming from any area, and you don't want decreased muscle firing either. You want to be aware of a square that I'm gonna tell you about. So the bottom of your ribs here are the top of the square. And those hip bones that we talked about in that first educational part is ASIS here, the top of the hip bones, that makes your square or rectangle. Um, you want to try to have as minimal movement in these areas as possible when you're performing these exercises. You want to make sure that you're working to build functional strength. That's what we want, functional strength. While performing many exercises, being aware of motion at the pelvis, like I said, is key. And that's my job to teach you about this. We'll review exercises on your back with progressions and modifications, side planks, in all four positions on your hands and your knees. And if performed correctly, this will help to build a strong foundation for your core and the pressure system that we were talking about. Okay, this first exercise that I'm going to review is just something that I think just about anyone could benefit from. But right now I'm going to demonstrate it, but I do not expect you to perform it. It will be available on replay to test your abilities to perform this. It tests your abilities to connect your pelvic floor to the deep rotators of your hips and the breathing system. So set that up for us. So when we're doing many of these exercises, you can use a small towel roll behind your neck. Most people need some sort of uh, something to go behind their neck for it to be in a neutral position. Ironically, for the past almost year, I've been using this Dumbo behind my neck because um, when my PT, when I found out, I found out through my PT that that's kind of what worked best for me. So I have my chair set up here in front of me and Dumbo's behind me. You're gonna take your feet, put them on the back of the chair if you can. If not, that's okay. You're gonna have your knees at 90 degrees here and your hips at 90 degrees here. You scoot your bottom forward or back as needed. You're gonna take your towel roll or dumbo, put it behind your neck. So your neck, your head is being lengthened towards that back wall back there. You're going to Put the ball between your knees. Now, if you have something that's a little bit wider, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. So you might want to start with a little bit wider uh, of a ball or a towel. Also, the further down that you put it towards your pelvis, it's also going to be a little bit easier. Right now, I'm going to put it right here in the middle. My head is here. I'm going to send my pubic bones down here. I'm going to gently try to pull up from my pubic bones. It is not an aggressive motion. We pull up from my pubic bones, not coming from your glutes. It's coming from your pelvic floor or the, like I said, the pubic bones are the best cue that I've found for my clients. So your pubic bones gently pull up. You squeeze this ball together, activate these inner muscles here. At the same time, you wanna make sure your chest and your shoulders are nice and relaxed. Your head is nice and relaxed. And then you're going to dig your heels into the chair. That's going to activate your glutes back here. And this is the position you're going to work in. From here, you're going to take your inhale with the tongue on the roof of your mouth. And then exhale. You have to build up to this. I've been working on my breathing, so my exhale can be probably even longer than that. The longer of an exhale you get, a slow, long, deliberate exhale, not a forceful exhale. When your ribs are melting down towards your pelvic floor, towards your pelvis, that will allow on the next inhale for better 
side, back, and front body expansion of your ribs. So if I exhale all the way out, then I'll be able to access more air on the inhale. My ribs are gonna be able to move. So I'm just gonna perform one round of this. So I'm inhaling. So again, the keys that we want to try to do while you're doing that exercise is pulling up from the pelvic, from, from the pubic bone, squeezing that ball together and digging the heels in, maintaining that while you're going through this breathing sequence. Now that's something that, yes, um, in the future, if you want to test yourself, see how your ribs are moving and how you've got backside and front body expansion, that's a great one to work with. Okay, so now we're gonna work with everybody else on the next couple of positions. We're gonna work first, let me move this chair out of the way. We're gonna work first on a heel slide. Now, you might think, oh, this exercise, this looks very easy. The key points that I wanna point out to you is that when you are doing this heel slide, and I'm gonna walk you through it, you do not want any motion occurring on the bottom of the ribs or at the at this square that we were talking about at your pelvis now someone with a weak abdominal system is going to either their pelvis is either going to rock from side to side up and down or they might have to hold their breath so you might be like feeling that you're holding your breath from your chest or your chest is not relaxed while you're trying to activate because like we talked about the pressure system, if there's weakness and you're trying to ask too much of the pressure system, another part of it is going to try to compensate and we don't want that. Or you might have a shallow breathing pattern when you're doing this. You want to be able to breathe into this position as if you're breathing doing your everyday activities. So we want our head in neutral position. We're going to go over. No motion at your pelvis, and then we're going to do our heel slide. So I'm here. I have Dumbo behind my head here. Or if I show you here, the towel, towel roll. So the towel roll supports my head pretty well, right like that. So we're going to pull up gently from the pubic bone. Now it's not an aggressive like this. We're not lifting everything. This is coming from my glutes. I don't want any of that. It's gently pull up from the pubic bone here. Ribs are melting down. I'm going to take, this is all my shoulders. Everything's nice and relaxed. I'm going to take an inhale with the tongue on the roof of my mouth. And then I'm going to exhale and slide my foot down on the floor. If it's better if it's a linoleum or wood floor, so it's better ease of the slide. So I'm going to take an inhale and then exhale. Now my exhale is long enough that I can extend the leg out and bring it back in on an exhale. If you haven't worked up to having an exhale that long because the motion should be pretty slow, then you do the exhale, bring the leg out, and then inhale, bring it back in all while keeping these ribs nice and down, the, pelt, the pubic bone coming up. So we have an inhale, exhale, and inhale. And so that's one of them. Did, how did that feel? Did you feel any motion at your pelvis? Did you feel any motion at the bottom of your ribs? Did you feel anything kind of going on in your hip flexors? Because you want those to be nice and relaxed too, which you're gonna go over in the next exercise. So that's the first part. Now, if you found any point in that motion that you had mo that you have some um, motion at your pelvis, then you can actually breathe into it. I'll explain that right now. So this is behind my head. I'm pulling up from my pubic bone. If say, when I got to here, I felt some motion at the pelvis on the other side, like it came up or moved a little bit. 
So I can do some breath work in this position with my leg in this position. So we're gonna inhale and then exhale. And inhale and exhale. So whatever what I call our sticky points that we might have, you can breathe into those positions and then retest to see how you feel um, going forward. If you are able to then the next time do it without any motion happening at the, at the pelvis. So the next part, we're gonna progress to a heel slide, this time with your foot off the ground. Your back, so the natural tendency is gonna have to have, want to have to have your back to arch a little bit. If you don't have the strength of the lower abdominals or if these ribs have a tendency of flaring, then your back is gonna to wanna to arch. Now we're doing this, things to think of. Did your hips wanna change positions? Also, if you have any diastasis, did you have any doming? Or did you have any expansion width or depth of the testing that you do for diastasis? If you had any of these things, just like we talked about, you can do breathing into that part of the sequence that you have some difficulty with. So we're gonna do this one. We're, when we're doing this, we're gonna take slow, long, deliberate inhale through your nose. The tongue is gonna be on the roof of your mouth to connect to your diaphragm. Then you want a good front side and back body expansion. And then on the exhale, you want the ribs melting down a long, slow, not forceful, deliberate exhale. Like I said before, we also don't want any tension on your hip flexors here. They should be nice and squishy. Another thing to be aware of, I'm gonna take note when we do it, is what happens at your ribs. Now you're starting notice of this square here. Do your ribs want to flare? So if you're doing, I'll walk through this when we're actually doing it. So if you're bringing the right leg out, don't do it yet. If you're bringing your right leg out, does your left rib want to flare up? Because it might want to, to try to help with this or if there's any weakness there. So we're going to do this now. Same as the previous one. The only difference is, is your heel is off of the ground. So. Neck is nice and long, lengthening back towards the back wall, gently pulling up from the pubic bone. Ribs are melting down. We're gonna inhale, front side and back body expansion, tongue on the roof of your mouth. And then exhale. Inhale, bring it back in. And then try the other side, pull up from the pubic bone. These ribs are nice and relax, but they're subtly melting down. So on the inhale, expansion, exhale. That side, when I extended that one out, I had a little bit of motion going on here and we don't want that. So I wanna focus again on that pubic bone coming up a little bit. time because my exhale was a little longer I was able to bring it back out and then back in on that exhale so see how you did with that one did you have any motion at your pelvis did you have any motion at your ribs how is your how is your uh, how are your hip flexors feeling now if you need to review this again this will be available on replay so you can test that out on replay as well the next thing we're gonna do is opposite arm and leg. Now, when we're doing this, we're bringing in another component of the arm coming up. Now we said before, like in the educational part, when you reach up, does your back wanna arch up? Do your ribs wanna flare up? Or can you bring that arm up with no motion happening in either of those areas? If you have one of those two examples, then you might have some rib flare going on when we do this opposite arm and leg. Same as what we talked about in the very beginning, you can also breathe into the part of the sequence that you feel you have some things going on that aren't the best technique. So another key we wanna talk about when we do this, your leg when you're doing this should feel almost as light as a feather. 
And you might say, oh my goodness, I feel it going on in my hip flexor. Well, then you have a little bit of weakness going on in your abdominals because if everything's working together in this pressure system, the pressure system should take the transfer of energy that's going on with your legs. So your hip flexor shouldn't be doing the work. Your abdominals could actually be doing, your core can be doing this work for you. So we'll demonstrate that right now. Head reaching, hold to the back wall, pubic bone coming up gently, ribs melting down. And then we're gonna take an inhale here. Exhale. And inhale, back in, exhale, opposite side. Inhale, back in, exhale. When I did that first one, my left leg did have a little bit of a tendency of going outside. So I'm just making you aware that's how particular we want to kind of be. We want to make sure of any motion that's going on, and then you can breathe into that position as you're doing it. So I'll do a full sequence on one on each side. Breathe the inhale, come on the roof of your mouth, front side and back body expansion, pubic bone coming up gently. Exhale. Inhale in, exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. Also, you want to make sure that you're aware of anything going on in your neck. When I transferred from one side to the other, or from the first one to the second one, I did notice a little bit of tension up in my um, upper traps here, and we don't want that. So it's being a little bit more aware of what's going on throughout your body. So the next progression of this is going to be marching, but we're going to start off with both feet on the ground. Again, when you want your head in a neutral position, reaching towards the sky, you might want a towel behind the neck. So same keys that we had before, no motion at the pelvis. We don't want any motion at the pelvis or the ribs. So we're here, pulling up from the pubic bone, ribs melting down, and we're slowly just gonna bring one leg up to that 90 degrees and then back down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. What was happening there? Did you have any motion happening at the pelvis? Again, if you feel any sticking points, then you can take those and do the breathing into that sticking point. If it's halfway, if your foot is halfway off, off the ground here, then you can do it, do the breathing exercises here. I like to explain to patients and clients, it's almost like you're trying to pee the air out. You're trying to really push all that air out. So from here, we're gonna to go to a little bit of a harder one with both feet off the ground. Now this, your back is definitely gonna to want to potentially arch here. And I'm gonna have some variations that you can use if your back does want to arch. So we're here, we're gonna, Pull up from that pubic bone, keep the back nice and flat here. See my back is nice and flat. And then from here, if this is enough, you can do your breathing that we were talking about in this position, head lengthened up towards the back wall. If you're okay with this, then you're going to try gentle. marching in this position. How did that feel? How did the marching feel when you were doing that? Did you have any motion going on in these ribs? Did you have anything going on 
in the in the pelvis area. If that's the case, try some of these variations that um, that I'm going to show you to try to get everything connected. So we're here. My feet are at 90 degrees. Only do this if your back is flat and you're not really straining for all of this. Now to try to get these upper uh, abdominal muscles involved, you can actually just kind of hold your hands in front of you at 90 degrees or or else in on a ball here. You can take your ball, pull it here and just gently squeeze the ball. That will get your upper abdominals involved, which will take some pressure off of that lower back. And try to do your breathing in this position and see how this feels. Is it easier for, then you, for you then to do the toe taps in this position while you're holding this ball here with these upper abs engaged? Now the key to this, you also don't want the upper abs to feel like they're gripping or bearing down. If you don't know what that, what that is, feel free to contact me. <laughs> we can further go into that. All right. So the next variation is to take the same ball and try to squeeze it between your legs. That's going to get the hip muscles involved, which might take some pressure off of your back as well, depending on what you need. So I'm here. Up here, squeeze the ball. See what that does. If it strains your back more, you don't want to do it. But if it takes some pressure off of your back, then try this exercise. It's a very one good exercise to breathe into as well. So if you don't have a ball, you can take this towel roll right here. Start with it down here. Pull up from the pubic bones, bring the knees up. Now this towel is further down towards my pelvis, making it a little bit easier to squeeze. See what that does. How does that feel at your pelvis? Okay. And you can just hold this position. Breathe into this position. Another good variation for that. Next, we're going to try to perform this off of a chair. So if those were a little bit hard for you, you put your feet on the chair, like I demonstrated in the beginning. And you're gonna do, I much prefer Dumbo. So back to Dumbo for me. So pull up from that pubic bone, ribs are melting down. Your feet are only gently resting on this chair for a little bit of support. Then you're gonna try to gently, and you can even have the chair a little bit further out. So you can move. Yeah, I'd have less of uh, your feet on the chair there. So you take it here and then you have the room to bring it up into this 90 degree position, back down, other one, and back down. So we're gonna inhale here, exhale. Inhale here, exhale. How did that challenge your muscles? How did that feel on your pelvis? Okay. So those are the variations that we have for that activity to try to help you to be able to do it without any movement happening in either of these uh, lower parts of your ribs or at your uh, pelvis down here. You basically want an efficient pressure system that allows for more functional strength. Okay. Now let's go into an exercise that I'm sure a lot of people have done, but have you felt it where you're supposed to feel it? That's the key. So I love starting this side plank position actually on a chair. And how I demonstrate this to you um, is you're gonna be able to feel it a little bit better. So I'm gonna talk and show you this position that we're gonna perform. So I have my, the angle here. So you have my elbow on the chair. I want my, my hips stacked on top of one another. So this front foot, my top leg is actually in front of 
the back leg. That's going to ensure that this, the, the hips, the pelvis is not going to be going backwards because that's what you're going to have a tendency to want it to do. So stack that front foot over like this. So the shoulders are almost coming forward that they're not going back. You have a little bit of a tilt forward. And then how much pressure you put on this front leg will gauge how much your side body is working here. So if I don't put my leg down too much, then my obliques are going to have to do a lot more work to hold me up. And then you can try making sure that these top is over the bottom one forward, then you can hold up into this position. Take this arm up, have everything nice and engaged, and you don't want too much happening through this shoulder. If you have a lot of activity or if you feel it through that shoulder a lot, then you wanna make sure that you're putting more pressure in that front leg. Okay, from there, we're gonna do the side plank on the ground. Same T, but we're gonna use that same position. I'm gonna show you from my other side. So, side plank from the ground. I'd also start with that foot over in front. That's gonna get you a better position of the top part of your pelvis over the bottom part. That's gonna really work these obliques on this side. So, we're turned down. And this is working. This is really working my side body here. And I can gauge how much pressure I'm putting on this, this uh, front leg. That's how much this is working here. And from here, still forward. And you can put the top leg on front. I'm making sure we're not turned back. We're forward. And then you can take the top arm up if you'd like a little bit more challenge, making sure this isn't down. Pulling nice and high there. Working everything here. So that side plank will actually, when you're ready for it, is going to help your diastasis a lot because you definitely want these external internal obliques on the side here to be working as you're trying to close that gap in the middle. Okay, the last exercise that we're gonna do is on all fours, hands and knees positioning. So I'm here, let me see the angle here. I'm here. I want my hands under my shoulders and my knees under my hips. I do want, I don't want you arched down like this or way high up, but I do want a slight arch. The slight arch is coming from pulling up from that pubic bone and having these ribs melt down, not squeeze down, but melt down. From here, I do want you to try to lean forward a little bit and see how this feels. What's going on in your core? What do you feel? Do you feel it nice and connected to one another? If not, you might wanna work in this position and do some of the breathing. I'll show you right here. So we're here, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, gently slight arch. I'm gently leaning forward over my hands and I'm gonna do my breathing here. So you can see me. I'm gonna inhale with the tongue on the roof of my mouth. Now head is also in line with the rest of my body. So we're here, head reaching tall, not extended up or down. So we're nice in here, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Again, as we stated before, on the inhale, you get a nice lengthening of your pelvic floor and the ribs are expanding. The exhale, you should feel a gentle pull up from the pelvic floor and your ribs coming down. So that's the first part of it. Any sticking points, not feel like it's connected, work and do some breathing in that position. From there, you can extend, we're gonna do a progression. We're gonna extend one arm out, we're gonna extend one leg out, and then we're gonna do opposite arm and leg. 
same thing. You're not just doing it to get the motion done. You're doing it to feel it in the correct areas. So we're here. Gentle pull up from the pubic bone, ribs melting down, hands over, hands under shoulders, gently leaning forward here. And let's move this chair. And as I exhale, I don't want you to come back. You have to stay forward. So inhale here. Exhale, inhale down, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. You can start with the legs at least that you keep the, the foot on the ground first. So my foot was off the ground, but you can start with the foot staying on the ground. So we have an inhale here, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Then let's progress to opposite arm and leg. So we're here, pulling up from that pubic bone, ribs melting down, have a nice connection between everything working in the middle there. Now, if you don't have a good connection through the middle there, getting in touch with a, a healthcare professional could definitely help. Um, there are little um, tricks that we can give you there's resisted breathing with a balloon, but if you're definitely not ready for that, then we're not ready for that. But that is definitely one thing that could help connect this area. But again, talking to a healthcare professional that you would know that that's how you want to progress, then you could be ready for that. So we're going to do opposite arm and leg. So we're here, tuck under, and then extend opposite arm and leg on the exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Same as all the other activities that we, exercises that we've done, you wanna feel it in this core area. Um, you don't want the hips, when we were in that position, you don't want the pelvis to be transitioning up and down, front and back. But that is a good position just to start with some basic breathing because most people need some work on front side and um, back body expansion for that 360 degrees of breathing. So that's an excellent exercise that I advise starting with to try to get some breathing mechanics you feel more comfortable with breathing mechanics. Okay, so that is all the exercises that I have for today. I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share this information. And if you have any questions, um, comments, please feel free to reach out to me at laura at dynamicmovementpt.com. Um, also dynamicmovementpt.com is the website and there's more information on there. This replay, I would hope um, in the next couple of days should be up, a uh, link of it should be up on there. Also, I think there should be one on YouTube. Um, Dynamic Movement Physical Therapy and Wellness is a mobile concierge physical therapy with a holistic, comprehensive, and personalized, very personalized approach to physical therapy and wellness. Um, come to me within the comfort of your own home. And all, there are also sessions available for telehealth. Um, I want to help educate people. That's why I'm doing this and help you guys feel better. So thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions, I can take them at the end. But for now, we'll stop the recording. And uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next Zoom.